right now. With lots of focus on the Middle East as the Israel-Hamas conflict rages on, some people are afraid that the war in Ukraine has been forgotten. Tonight, how the Biden administration and people here in San Antonio are supporting Ukraine. But at the top tonight, a San Antonio neighborhood fed up with vehicle thefts and criminal mischief is working together for one goal, and that is fighting crime. This is San Antonio police say that they're seeing even more property crimes. But as the night team's Patty Santos reports, police need help from victims so that they can take criminals off the streets. Tay Garcia's home camera was rolling as a white Kia pulled up in broad daylight. So I went out the front door. I see the car coming back and the kids running, you know, and they took some of the stuff with them. The people in the car damaged her Halloween animatronics and sped off. Their stunt cost her $2,500. So what's missing from it? This one is completely crushed, like the, the legs and stuff, they're all bent in every direction. She shared our video online to warn other neighbors. After sharing notes, neighbors think the same suspects have been vandalizing and stealing vehicles in the 78230 zip code. This happens every day. You know, sometimes we just find out about it because it, it comes out in the news or somebody posted. But this is crime that happens every single day in every neighborhood. And she's right. San Antonio police say property crimes are up more than 6% so far this year. If they see something, they uh, they just go walk on up and they just take the package. SAPD detectives Carlos and Sierra and Raul Valdez work the property crimes and auto theft division. They say criminals are roaming neighborhoods looking for easy opportunities and unfortunately they find them. We leave our cars unlocked. Uh, we leave valuable things within sight and so that those kind of things attract people to our vehicle. But well-lit homes with cameras can help police stop thieves. And usually we're pretty good at getting people identified. We get tips and then we can go from there and make an arrest. Even air tags help. But investigators want people to call police to track stolen property. You can replace property anytime and not your life or your family member's life. Garcia urges neighborhoods to stick together. It doesn't matter where it's coming from. If we all unite and come together, we, we have a solution. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. So by the way, Tay also says that the surveillance footage shows the suspects carrying guns. Now, police are telling people not, if, they, if they're ever in that situation, not to confront the thieves. Now, keep this in mind before you head out this weekend. There are some road closures to tell you about. As of about an hour ago, the main lanes of Loop 1604 eastbound are fully closed from the Vance Jackson Road exit ramp to the Lock Hill Selma Road entrance ramp. You're also going to see closures along the Loop 1604 eastbound collector distributor at the I-10 interchange and the Loop 1604 eastbound frontage road at the I-10 interchange. For a full list of closures and also detours, just look for this article on KSAT.com. We'll help you get around. Now, an update to a story that we brought to you earlier this week on the night beat. Three local congressmen sent a letter to National Park Services asking it to create a plan to preserve the missions after seeing a rise in vandalism. Well, now National Park Services is responding, saying that it's experienced persistent crime and vandalism since the pandemic. Now, it can't speculate as to why there's been an increase. But when it comes to the plan to preserve the sites, they said in part, quote, the National Park Service has been working closely with senior city and county officials to include law enforcement for the city of San Antonio, Bear County, and other federal agencies, as well as partners and community groups to protect the iconic and internationally significant San Antonio missions, end quote. Now tonight we're learning more about this man. This is 40 year old Jesus Prado. He's a suspect accused of shooting two San Antonio police officers. It's a story that we brought to you last night on the night beat. Now those two officers that we just told you about had to get surgery last night after being shot at from a home on Amistad Pass, Pass on the northeast side. Police say that this all started when Prado went to his house to get his kids and that's when they say that Prado argued with his wife and then doused the house in gasoline, threatening to set it on fire. Now, both of the officers shot were the first ones to arrive at the scene. They're still recovering tonight. And at this point, we don't know their names. Now, Prado is charged with two counts of attempted capital murder of a police officer and one count of deadly conduct. Attorneys for the former officer accused of shooting a teen outside of a Northside McDonald's last year want to take the trial out of town. They actually asked a judge for a change of venue today. 
former officer James Brennan is accused of shooting Eric Cantu a year ago. You remember this case. His attorneys argued that the extensive media coverage and the comments made by both Police Chief William McManus and District Attorney Joe Gonzalez have tainted the potential jury pool here. They say that would prevent Brennan from getting a fair trial. The next hearing is in December, and if prosecutors do not respond to the motion to move the trial, a judge could grant the motion before the end of the year. Three Texas Republicans making moves for U.S. House Speaker as the search for that position drags on. And they are Pete Sessions of Waco. He announced this afternoon that he's running for Speaker, while Jody Arrington of Lubbock and Roger Williams of Willow Park are both thinking about going for that role. This is after Republicans dropped Jim Jordan as their nominee. Jordan failed to get the speakership today for the third time. So now many in the GOP are frustrated and angry because they don't know how to move forward. Now, installing a speaker is especially important because any delay in doing that could affect President Joe Biden's funding request for Israel and Ukraine. Without a speaker, the House can't pass the proposals. Of the $105 billion requested, about $14 billion would be designated for Israel. The White House says that most of that money would help with air and missile defense systems. Now, this weekend marks two weeks since Hamas launched its attack on Israel, leading to airstrikes and thousands of deaths in Israel and Gaza. You've seen those horrific pictures. Hamas has also taken a number of people hostage, but actually released two of those hostages earlier today. The mother and daughter are American citizens who were visiting from Chicago. President Biden has spoken with them, and they were expected to reunite with family in Israel. Meanwhile, more than half of the president's funding request would go to Ukraine. The country is more than a year and a half into its war with Russia. U.S. funding for Ukraine was left out of the stopgap bill that Congress passed to keep the government open. And as the night team's Avery Everett explains, that's really worrying people here in San Antonio because they think that the war in Ukraine has been forgotten. It is still very real. Even an ocean away, Anna Stamp says it's hard to think about what's still happening in her home country of Ukraine. It's real and reading the news every day and seeing dead people and seeing the blood and seeing dead kids is just, it's heartbreaking. Heartbreak that's been happening now for a year and a half since Russia invaded Ukraine in February of 2022. I cannot imagine what people there under bombs and under sirens going through. Stamp says she's still pushing for support and doing all she can from San Antonio. We just uh, gather everything that we can collect and then we send uh, to uh, help injured and um, wounded um, soldiers and citizens in Ukraine. But she says she can't do it alone. When Congress passed a stopgap bill to keep the government open just weeks ago, it didn't include funding for Ukraine. In his address last night, President Joe Biden said it was, quote, vital to support Ukraine and Israel through their current conflicts. Ukraine is like as little as the state of Texas fighting the country that is five times bigger. Just down the street, the staff at European Dumplings are serving support through their meals. Some of the revenue that we bring in goes directly over there. Still fundraising and finding ways to move forward. This has kind of been pushed to the back page, but it's still very real. With a fight that's far from over. It feels like it will never end. People here in San Antonio say they won't stop showing support. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. On a lighter note now, this is one of the city's most popular festivals, and it's happening this weekend. This year, it's also celebrating a very special milestone, and we have a preview. Stick around. An exciting night at the Carver Community Culture Center. A brand new season kicking off with Step Africa. It's a high power, high energy performance. And we spoke with the director of the Carver about that unique art style. It's a very like culturally rich, like historically relevant art form, and they've just elevated it. So tonight is not only fun and high energy and you get to experience the athleticism of stepping, but you also get to learn a little bit about the history. By the way, multiple Grammy Award winning trumpeter and pianist Terrence Blanchard is one of the many artists that's set to perform at the Carver 
this season. So that's something to look forward to. Now this weekend, one of South Texas's most prominent art festivals is back and it is celebrating a very special anniversary. It's Luminaria's Quinceañera. Today, this Saturday, marks 15 years of the event, bringing the city's vibrant arts community to Hemisphere Park, which is gorgeous. It features a wide range of art forms, including music, dance, theater. The festival is also well known for its large scale light shows and projection mapping on historic buildings and for Luminaria, Executive Director Yadira Lozano, it is all about celebrating the right way. This year is our 15th anniversary, so we're celebrating quinceañera style, very San Antonio, very uh, roots and cultural, and we just want to celebrate the authentic side of San Antonio, which is, you know, everything, our food, our art, our music, our painting. So again, Luminaria is going to be tomorrow at Hemisphere and the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center. The event starts at 6 p.m. and it goes to midnight. So yeah, leave your hoodie, all of that stuff at home. You'll be just <laughs> fine <laughs> yes. during that event. It's going to be pretty nice out there. Yeah, it is. I mean, 75 right now and tomorrow night's going to be even warmer. The fall like feel is leaving us for an extended stretch here today. It was 57 in the morning, a nice crisp morning, actually a few degrees below average. But by the afternoon, we made it up to 94, which is a new record by two degrees tomorrow, likely to be another record breaker 62 in the morning. Comfortable start to the day, low humidity, but by noon we're already up to 88 and then 93 for the high temperature. Some increasing high clouds throughout the day as well. 95 in Del Rio tomorrow, 91 Kerrville, Hondo 92, Pleasanton 93. For the most part, we'll be about 93 degrees, low 90s around Bear County and surrounding areas. Sunday morning, we're in the mid 60s with some fog. The humidity's surging back in from the Gulf of Mexico. First thing Sunday morning, you'll feel it and you'll actually see it as well in the form of fog, a humid day and then 86 for the high. So not quite as warm as what we have on Saturday and then looks like we'll be in the 80s all of next week for highs, so a little above average, but very humid and sticky as well. Here's our weather situation, our whole setup. Big blue H upper level high. It's right overhead pushing down on us. Going to give us another record setting day in terms of the high temperature. It's also been holding Hurricane Norma at bay just south of Cabo San Lucas. This is a serious hurricane. Late season category three. Max sustained winds at 120 heading north toward Cabo San Lucas. It's going to veer eastward as it slowly weakens into Monday. Then the remnants, the leftovers of Norma, mid and upper level energy, that's going to be thrown our way. And I do think Monday is our best chance to tap into some of the energy and moisture from Norma. We'll have the Gulf moisture in place here at the ground. You'll feel that the stickiness and mugginess, then also more moisture aloft just to add to our rainfall potential. Now, don't get me wrong. We're not all going to get rain on Monday. It's going to be scattered in nature, about 40% of us seeing it. But I do think we could see a few decent downpours pop up for the luckiest communities. 40% chance Monday, then some daily rain chances there ever thereafter, just 30% chance, so fairly isolated in nature. Looks like most of the Pacific energy and moisture over the next basically next week as our weather pattern changes will be in parts of North Texas and West Texas. So I know we may not be getting all the rain, but at least other drought stricken parts of Texas are like likely to see some warmer mornings. Don't need the sweatshirt or light jacket. We're going to be in the low 70s for morning temperatures next week, so we don't have a don't have that fall like feel. All right, Adam, thank you. Now, you know who always brings their game here? Larry. Well, we Happy try to Friday. bring our game here. Larry and Mary, we both deliver, I think, on Friday night. Got pretty loud. It did get, yeah, well, sometimes yeah. we have to yell to get those scores uh -huh. out. I mean, it's just a crazy <laughs> night. So big game coverage. We're talking Smithson Valley at Bernie Champion. This was a close game in the first half. The second half, not so much. And Astros Rangers game five ALCS was wild. Coming up. Everybody ask me who's next. We're next on big game coverage. Case at 12. Yeah.
love it. Thank you, Goldberg. That was awesome. The wrestling great was hanging out at Bernie ISD Stadium tonight with the champion Chargers. We're hosting the Smithson Valley Rangers in our game of the week, Mary. And Charger Nation was hoping to hand the Rangers their first district loss of the season as both sides taste the District 12 5A D1 championship. Let's get to those highlights. First quarter, Chargers running back Cole Rhea powers his way in for a short score and champion leads 7 to nothing. Smithson Valley answers back with the ground attack. Brad Sowersby gets outside and he just gets inside the pylon. 14 yards of this game is tied at seven. How about a high five, kid? Later in the first frame, here come the Chargers. QB Jordan Ballum throws a nice ball to Campbell to Barry. Perfect toss and catch. 32-yard touchdown, and it's 14 to seven Chargers. But the Rangers slowly pull away from there. Cade Spradling two-yard touchdown run, and the Rangers lead it 21-14. Third quarter now, Ballin goes back to pass. He throws, and the Rangers' Nicholas Dudzikowski intercepts the ball, and he takes it back for a touchdown. Now we sped it up for timing reasons, folks, and the Rangers take this one 49-14. to We made adjustments at halftime, but it was really all about just being us. All right, We played our brand of football for four quarters, and uh, that's our deal. We're going to play for four quarters, and you got to hang with us. So it was great to do that. Bernie Champion's a great football team. They're very well coached, so it was a great game playing them. Let's go to Orem Stadium where the third ranked Alamo Heights Mules were hosting the Edison Golden Bears in District 14 5A2 action. First quarter, the Mules are leading 7 to nothing. when they get more. The handoff goes to running back DK Garza. He gets a big hole thanks to his offensive line and he breaks off a 25-yard touchdown run to make it 14 nothing. Mules and the Mules roll 73-6 to stay undefeated. The Brackenridge cheerleaders entertaining their side at Alamo Stadium tonight. The Eagles were facing the Sam Houston Hurricanes. First quarter, Canes with the ball and leading 14 nothing. The handoff goes to Jaden Cervantes. He runs to his left, cuts up the field, stop, pushes a dude out of his way. Here it comes. Get out of my way, bro. Then runs down the sideline for a 39 yard touchdown. Best run nominee right there. Sam Houston leads 21 nothing and they win 42 zip. Check out the second ranked Reagan Rattlers entering Comalander Stadium to smoke. Always a cool entrance. The Rattlers are playing the Churchill Chargers in District 28 6A. First quarter, Reagan up 7 to nothing when they double their lead. Handoff goes to the very dangerous Cole Pryor. He finds an easy path to the end zone, 18 yards to make it 14-0. Rattlers and Reagan wins in a shutout, 38 to nothing. All right, MacArthur and Kyle Lehman are both looking to bounce back from some tough losses last week, and both are winless in district action thus far. Take a look at those Texas-sized homecoming moms out at Hero Stadium. It's Lobos QB, Colin Richardson with a quick toss to Noah Long for the touchdown. That drive started with great field position thanks to a big Amir Washington kick return, and Kyle Lehman goes on to win it in shutout fashion, 42 to 0. Time to visit Lenhoff Stadium now where New Braunfels is trying to spoil Clemens 2 and 0 district record. The Unicorns looking to go to the air, but Leighton Adams' pass is intercepted by Damian Robinson, who weaves his way through would-be tacklers before getting wrapped up at the three-yard line. That would set up Raekwon Ruffin for the easy rushing TD. It would take over. Oh, how about that double overtime tied at 24? We'll see a final on the, our website later from this one. Now Piper hoping to stay perfect in 13 5A D2 as it visits Veterans Memorial at Rutledge Stadium. Piper's Jake South lofts a pass to Jake Strachan. He finds a lane along the sideline before Ooh. he steps out near the 40. So close, but no worries. Piper pays, uh, pays it pays off later. Brady Hopper barrels in for the TD and it's Piper coming out on top. 54 to 14. The Stevens Falcons and O'Connor Panthers are playing football at Ferris Stadium tonight. First quarter, Panthers QB Ryder Dorn throws to Luke Valdez for a sweet one-handed catch. Let's look again at half speed, one-handed snag by number three. Awesome. Moments later, Brandon Martinez takes the handoff. He finds Pater, 17 yards. The Panthers lead 14 to nothing. And the final from Ferris, O'Connor gets the dub, 28 to zip. Over at the Gus, the Taft Raiders are up 20 to six over Holmes. In the third quarter, the Raiders looking for more, but Zachary Gutierrez intercepts the pass at the one-yard line. Huge defensive play, and let's check out that score. Taft beats Holmes by a final of 36 to 6. Wow, okay, out at Harlan Memorial Stadium, both Jefferson and McCullum looking for their fifth win of the season. And after a red zone interception, the Cowboys drove all the way down the field. 
and pushed quarterback Justin Rodriguez in for the touchdown. You'll see it right here. In the second quarter, Jeff responded by tossing it to Daniel Oriza, who sprints it in from three yards out. <clears throat> Jefferson comes out on top 28 to 14. Out to SAISD Sports Complex, Highlands hosting Lanier, and the Vokes had a 14 to nothing lead when we got there at halftime. Third and goal from the five yard line, QB run for Vincent Chacon, but he gets lit up by Ooh. Albert Perez Torres and Willie Gaskin. The Vokes would settle for a field goal to make it 17 to nothing and would go on to win it 38 to seven. Six and one, Antonian is back home for the first time since week three, taking on Houston St. Pius. First quarter, Apache's trailing. Jace Toscano lets one fly. It's a dime to Adan Samaliago, and the senior is in for the touchdown. That was one impressive play in the end. Antonian wins it 38. To 28. We've got plenty of action to go with the BGC road trip. Photog Sal made stops at Navarro High School, New Braunfels, New Braunfels Canyon High School for two district games. Yes, we've got those highlights and more scores, but of course, as always, let's listen to the Thomas Jefferson High School marching band before the break. Welcome back to the Night Beat. It's time now for the BGC road trip. It took Photog Sal to Navarro High School, New Braunfels Canyon. Mary. Yes, we are in store for two quality matchups, and this late in the season, you know district hardware is top of mind. Let's start at Navarro High School. <laughs> the Navarro Panthers hoping to give the undefeated Wimberley Texans their first loss, but Wimberley QB Cody Stover has other plans as he slips in for an early TD. Later, it's Stover to Nolan Wida, who makes the catch on the run. And another Stover rushing touchdown finishes off the drive. The Texans feeling it tonight. All right, pure focus from the Cougars drum line amidst a clash between Seguin and New Braunfels Canyon. Late in the game, Canyon's Reese Dietrich drops a beauty to Harry Hassman, 29 yards. Same drive, Jackson Reagan cups Reagan the ball, up the middle and goes 32 yards before the sophomore is taken down just short of the goal line. Reagan would eventually punch it in for the Cougars. Now here's some finals. Wimberley takes down Navarro 48 to 20. They improve to 8 and 0. And New Braunfels Canyon rolls past Seguin in a 48 to 14 victory. And how about some more finals for you? you have Southside over Lorena Martin 36 to 17. Jernton's a winner 49 to 6 against Poteet. You have Honda over Crystal City 38 to 14. Cole edging out Randolph 35 32. Great game there. Somerset over Memorial 62 to 7. Lytle one better than Cotula 7 to 6 tonight. And we got three more scores. Laverne is a winner, 40 to 7. Bandera, 10 better than Divine, 31 21. And Poth shuts out Natalia, 56 to nothing. Dugouts emptied in the bottom of the eighth inning in game five of the ALCS between the Astros and Rangers tonight after Brian Abreu hit Rangers outfielder Adelise Garcia with a 99 mile per hour fastball. Abreu and Garcia were both ejected. Now this came two innings after Garcia hit a go ahead three run homer and celebrated emphatically <laughs> while going down the first baseline. The Astros did not like that, but the Astros get the last lap. Jose. Altuve cranks a three run shot to left field in the top of the ninth to give Houston the lead for good. The Astros win five to four. They now lead this best of seven series three games to two. this after losing the first two games. Game six is Sunday night. How about that? That was quite the game and what a power move just to slowly walk it. I know it's not <laughs> well respected to do that, but still quite the power move. <laughs> this is what makes these things good, yeah. right? When you're just like biting your nails up until the very end. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. Oh, you have to get excited when you hear that. We're getting closer to this year's Dia de los Muertos Festival. It's happening October 28th and 29th at Hemisphere Park next weekend. Now, to get tickets and learn more about all the events, just scan that QR code that you see right there on your screen. Well, at least we have a shot at rain next week. It's not going to be a drought buster, but you look at the area reservoirs and lakes and they're all way down. Record low canyon, 19 feet below the conservation pool. That's only 64% capacity. Still have the extreme and exceptional drought around our area. It's not as bad as you get closer to the Rio Grande, though. A good chunk of Texas will be getting rain next week. Around here, 40% chance starting Monday.
All right. Thank you so much. And thank you for sticking with us all week. Have a fantastic weekend. You deserve it. We'll see you on Monday.